right, so this is a beautiful map. Uh, I believe it's pronounced Quivilloa, Quivilloa, and let me kind of highlight that at the top. There we go, Quivilloa. So that's what we have there. Uh, Safala, Safa, Safala, Safala, Safala. Uh, the reference point here is 1588. Uh, this is ancient history. Uppsala University is part of the CETA funded Urban Origins follow-up to Project Lincoln, Botswana, uh, Comoro Islands, Kenya, Madagascar, Mozambique, 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 uh, Namibia. I always have a hard time saying Namibia. Tanzania, Zanzibar, Zimbabwe, and Sweden. How the fuck Sweden get in there? But that's story for other days in my um, Dr. Mumby voice. So that's what the Safala is illustrating. That's another map that we saw earlier uh, in terms of the reference point. Um, Kilwa. And this is basically the same scenario. Mombasa. That's another map. The hand painted map from 1588 is included in, um, how do you pronounce all that? 1572 to 1618 by Blonde and Hogenberg. So, there you go. Again, Sweden makes its appearance once again. I think that's a nice illustration of what we're looking at here. Let's see, now I want to jump to these colonizers. That's what I want to jump to now. And we got some over there, even as I speak, before I tell you. All right, so that's actually where I want it to start. Is that where I want to start, or this where I want it to start? Uh, I think well, this is where I want it to start. So again, here they are, live and without color. Um, so that's Australian. Uh, some of these names may be recognizable. Some may be a first time. But I think that's good information to get your sights on some of these people. Or some of these con artists, however you want to refer to them. Uh, Sir Francis Burton or Francis Burton. Uh, that name is definitely recognizable. So that's moving up from the 1864. So they, they don't necessarily have to be in ascending order or descending order. But this is their unfortunate stamp, as you would say, on a lot of uh, history. And let's see. Let's see what we got over here in terms of years and things of that nature. This is a little earlier than what I wanted to show. something that really jumped out at me earlier. Oh, look at this. 1871. And they got that damn cross there again. Boy, if y'all don't leave them religions alone. If y'all don't leave them religions alone. They put their stamp all over the territory. If y'all don't leave those religions alone. Because that's what them religions did to you right there. That's what those religions did to you right there. That's what those religions did to you, straight up. Major slaves, look at it. Oh, wow, let's, let's read what this is saying. Uh, a boy refused to marry his girlfriend because a girl is born from a slave family. Farming and other hard labor seem to be for slave laborers. Now, 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 this is what I want you to see now. What we have here, what we have here, we see who's kind of bringing in and now putting their stamp on the land 
on the great cradle of civilization. We see what he got on his head, right? We see what's going on. We see this is the Arab influence, right? We see this, right? We see what they got on their head. We see this is the Arab influence. We see that the strongest Arab influence that I know of in East Africa, specifically Tanzania, is Zanzibar. Over 90% of the people are uh, Muslims over there. Now, look at what you're looking at. Look at what you're looking at. Man, if y'all don't leave these religions alone, boy, if y'all don't leave these religions alone, Look at what you're looking at. Bar Bargash being said was the second sultan of Zanzibar. Bargash ruled Zanzibar from October 7, 1817 to March 26, 1888. Bargash is credited with building much of infrastructure of Stone Town. I stayed in Stone Town for a little hot minute, uh, including pipe water, public baths, a police forces, road parks, hospital, and large administrative buildings as the whatever how you pronounce that name Bailey Jajabi House of Wonder Bargash also helped abolishment of the slave trade in Zanzibar by signing an agreement with Britain in 1870 70, excuse me prohibiting slave trade in his kingdom and closing the great slave market in Mukanazini Zanzibar Mukanazini Mukanazini Zanzibar I think I um I think I drove through there I'm pretty sure I drove through there. I think I drove through there when I was in Zanzibar. Uh, so that's a reference point. They never tell you everything you need to know. You got to do the homework yourself. So you need to look up that 1870 Britain Agreement. Research it. Find out what it entails. Because I'm telling you, they, they don't do anything without one hand scratching the other. So trust me. They may have, quote, unquote, abolished one type of slavery but basically created a whole new slavery. You know what the great teachers like Malcolm X, etc., say? That the slavery of the mind is greater than the physical slavery in and of itself. So you need to use that as a reference point and research it and then come up with your conclusion from there. That's my point of view. Let's see what's going on over here. I was over here earlier. This is the early 1900s. Same people, same game plan. I miss Arusha, man. Arusha's a beautiful place. Beautiful place, beautiful place. The Doma, which is now the capital of Tanzania. Let me get that picture for everyone. Get some of these pictures. That's the reference to soldiers training in Arusha. I ain't gotta show him again. Colonel Von. I mean, like, I, I I love history. This is why I'm against trying to dismantle and take down and deconstruct uh, uh, historical figures and monuments. I don't care if the person was. Let's just say for layman's terms, Satan himself. I don't care if it was Satan himself. I, 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 I'm not going to tear down a statue of Satan himself. I'm going to keep that up as a reference point so the people can have dialogue and have conversation and know what was going on at that time. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I am not going to, because guess what, when you tear down, see what people don't understand and where they get it twisted, and because people don't think for themselves, when you tear down these statues and monuments and historical sites, then now you're, you're essentially suppressing what took place, and you're not giving anyone else a reference point, and now you can tell the story however you want to tell the story. And that's never a good thing. That's never a good thing. So, you know, if, if the person done something noteworthy in history, being it good or bad, I want it documented because I want to be able to do my own due diligence because I don't want to hear nobody else tell the story. I want to do my own due diligence all day, every day. So those are some points. I think the last one I'm going to really emphasize or illustrate right now 
is here. That's a layout. 1911. 1911 is such an interesting year. 1911 is 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 documented, highlighted for a better use of words in so many references from a historical standpoint all throughout the world. Anybody that's familiar with Gematria, I drop those terms from time to time. G-E-M-A-T-R-I-A is one of the main reasons why you can see even some of the foolishness and buffoonery that's going on in the United States now. You can read the TVs and you can see behind the veil through Gematria because how they use letters and, and numbers to basically decode or help you decode the truth and what's going on. Let's see what's going on here. Street constructions in Tanganyika. So this is what Tanzania was initially called Tanganyika uh, during the German colonial period. Look at this, bro. Now I know he probably got a gun, but why don't they just take a goddamn motherfucking ax to this man standing right there? Like, why the fuck is, I, I got all these broad, broad strong, you know, cockles standing around, you know what I'm saying? Man, you could have hit him in the head a long time ago, bro. I know he got that hat on, but he ain't worth two cents. Look at him, body all out of shape, man. They could have took care of business right there. It's real. It's real in the field. I'm in a museum talking and referencing and putting this content together for my people. And the reason why I'm doing this, man, and I got a lot more coming. I'm collaborating with some people as we speak, already have, and I'll be taking you guys on more tours of this kind, giving you some great history about Malcolm X, how he came here in 1964, how a lot of the Black Panthers came here in 19, well, in the early 1900s, during that era. Um, how uh, Tupac Shakur, um, uh, I think it was his godfather or something. Um, ah, that name, it fails me, but how he died here and how his son is still here may have an opportunity to interview him and let you guys talk to him. So I got some things in store, family. Stay, stay in tune, stay abreast. Man, there's so much history here. Um, this is only what's documented, and again, what's documented is documented by the oppressors, so you can only use these really as reference points. You cannot use this as a guide or tutorial to history in and of itself, because your oppressors are never going to tell you the truth. It's just, it's just that simple and plain. So, I want y'all to stay tuned. Uh, I got a lot of good information coming. And we're going to have some conversation. We're going to have some dialogue. You know, you can always drop your comments in the chat. And definitely, we we, we can get in. We, we can talk about this thing. Because you know what I'm about. I'm, I'm about the liberation of people in general. But definitely my people. My people first. And, you know, I don't need to fight for nobody else. This point is to do so. Uh, this is some good information just to be able to reference and look at that beautiful queen right there. Who is this beautiful queen? Teresa Natar of Kasulu District in Kingoma. Born in 1922 and passed away or transitioned in 1999. I was queen of the Wahoo. I mean, she looked like a queen. See, she was she was a queen in the flesh as well. So that's cool. Um, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Wow. That's a uh, master teacher. Mwalimu was teacher in Swahili, and that's Julius Nairi. I mean, this this is the what's known as the founding father of Tanzania. Uh, oh, I know what I want to show. There's some other things I need to show as well before I get out of here. Hopefully, I want to make all of this a part of... I want to make it one video, but if I have to break it up in two videos, I definitely, I'll definitely break it up in two videos. But I would like 
to keep it all on one video. Like I said, I got some great content coming. Man, we're gonna be talking to, uh, man, we, we, we gonna, we're gonna be talking to some people. Ooh, it's, it's about to get hot. You better like, comment, share, subscribe, share, 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 because it's, it's about to get heat, boy. We about to spread some good information. Kenya. This is some African history. All right, there's one more thing I definitely want to share. That's an art museum. I'm ready to go over there. By the looks of things, I might have to make two videos out of this. I might have to make two videos. I think I'm gonna have to make two videos. I'm just give you guys a reference point. In this photograph, again, master teacher Malimo uh, Julius Nieri examines his feet together with Minister, um, I guess that's pronounced, Bahoke Munaka, and other party members doing a rest after a walk of 130. Oh my God, I'll be examining my feet too. From Butayama, Musoma, to Mwaza in support of the Arusha Declaration. Wow, they walked. And what year was this? It don't say the year. 134 miles. Man. I, 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 I. I don't know what happened there, but that's interesting. Hey, this, this is how they show up. This is how they always show up. They show up with smiles, like they love you. And before you know it, you working for them. You, you, you working for them with no exit, with no exit. But, the, but that's how they show up. 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 Apologize, y'all. I know on a lot of these, I probably was a little too far out in terms of the information. Um, Malibu uh, Julius Nieri delivering a speech on officially opening the new campus of the University College of Dar es Salaam. I think that's a college that I'm right across the street from. Kusoma means to study. Teachers in adult education classes with villager of. Bundushi, Bundushi War in Kahama District. That's 1971. I bet you, man, the land was so beautiful there. I know over time it's only gotten more polluted, but I know it was beautiful because Africa is beautiful now. So I know it was beautiful back then. Wow, I know. Man, when, when so many of our brothers and sisters were coming over here during the 60s and everything, I know Africa was just beautiful. A lot of people came here for refuge. Yeah, look that up. Freedom fighters, you know, like I said, Panther members. And unfortunately here is the transitioning of master teacher Mwalimu Julius Nyeri. Oh, it's hard for me to pronounce his name sometimes. In Yeri, uh, in Yeri. Uh, but that's on his arrival from St. Thomas Hospital, London, October 1999. And this is, uh, I think this is a bus terminal here in Dar. Let's read it. The special glass structure in which the body of the late father of the nation, Mwali Munari Nayeri, was kept for the public to pass the last respect at the National Stadium of Dar. Okay, so this is, oh, oh, I guess this was the entrance in. That was just the stadium itself. So let's see what we have here. That art gallery is probably pretty nice. Let me see what we have here. 